Let's get started on our mats. We're gonna be seated today. So if you'd like to start, you can start seated on your blankets if it feels more comfortable for you. I like to sit on top of one or two blankets when I um, come to practice, just so that my hips are a little bit higher than my knees. And then once you're there, you can shift and adjust yourself so that the weight of your body is positioned on your sitting bones. So those bony protrusions right at the foundation of your seat. You could have your legs crossed or they could be straight, whatever is comfortable for you. And if you're feeling any sort of strain in your knees or in your hips, feel free to bring an additional folded pillow or blanket underneath your thighs or your knees. And we're gonna start off by keeping your spine nice and straight and making sort of little circles. Circles in one direction and then the other. So the spine is straight and we're circling the spine around the hips. Awesome. And then changing directions if you haven't already to circle the other way. And then we'll do a similar movement where we're gonna go, come back to center. And this time you're gonna sort of stretch forward and tall and then round the spine like um, the other direction. So as you stretch forward and long, you're gonna stretch into the front of your spine. And then as you round and lean back, stretching the back of your spine. And maybe you're even gonna coordinate that with your breath. You could inhale and reach your arms up and hold on to your legs and exhale and lean back. Maybe do that a couple more times if it feels good, waking up the body. And then coming back to where we started in center. So adjust or change your legs if they're feeling uncomfortable. Don't settle for discomfort today. We're gonna take some breaths, normal, easy breaths. Some people say that the hardest breath is your just your natural breath, because as soon as we start talking about it, it's so tempting to change the breath. Maybe close your eyes or let your eyelids fall heavy. And then imagine yourself between two waterfalls. So one is just in front of your nose and the other is just behind your head. And as we start to move into this next movement, let your goal be to try not to get yourself wet. So you're not gonna lean forward and you're not gonna lean back. So as you inhale next, reaching your left arm up to the ceiling. So I'm gonna mirror you. And as you exhale, you're gonna reach your right arm a little to the side and lean over again without getting, um, without leaning forward or without leaning back. And then inhale back to center. And as you exhale, other side. So as you're reaching your arms up, reaching the top of your head as well, moving with your breath. So sometimes this is one of the reasons why it might be nice to close your eyes so that you're more likely to move with your breath instead of necessarily with my breath. And if something feels really lovely, you could stay there for a couple of breaths if it feels good. The next time you're back in center, interlace your fingers together like a little tennis racket and press the hands up towards the ceiling. Drop down into your seat as you reach towards the ceiling. Be conscious that you're not arching your spine. And then releasing the arms and let your arms come back down to center and just pause for a breath or two. Let's transition now to hands and knees. If you want to swing your legs around and make your way to hands and knees. And then once you're there, just kind of like the way that a cat or an, a, an animal does when they come onto a surface, you're kind of going to pad around a little bit to try and find where the perfect place for you to set up your weight is.
From there, reach your reach your body forward and up into cow pose. And then round the spine into cat pose like a cat on Halloween. So as you inhale, roll your shoulders back and down, looking upwards. And when you exhale, roll the shoulders forward and away from one another. Lifting your seat high to the sky, creating a crease between your hips and your thighs. And then lengthening so that it's as though your tail's tucking between your legs. One last time like this. And then we'll come back to our tabletop shape. And from tabletop, coming up to a high kneeling shape. So if this next, oh, you're multiplying over there. Hello. If you, this next shape, you if you feel a little imbalanced, then you're welcome to go towards a wall and put your fingertips on a wall or hold on to a chair if you want. What we're gonna do is cross your left thigh in front of your right thigh and come to a kneeling pose with your left thigh in front of your right thigh. So if you've ever practiced Gomukhasana or cow's face pose, that's what we're going for here where the knee is in front of the knee and you bring your feet out to the side. So if you need more support as you do that, I'm just gonna hang on to these blocks so that I can show you what it looks like from the back. You'll slide your left knee in front of your right knee. And if that feels comfortable, you'll start to bring your feet further apart from each other like they're going to come around towards your hips. Now notice how your right hip sort of swivels to the right here. See if you can pull that around, even if you have to bring your foot back in to do it. So try to have both hips facing the same direction, almost like if your, hip ha ha if your hips had headlights, they're shining straight ahead. From there, you're gonna reach your arms up and then bring the hands back down. On your inhale, you're reaching up. On your exhale, bringing them down. Bringing your hands to your waist. Now send your thighs a little further forward. Looking up towards the sky and lifting your chest high into just a wee bit of a back bend. Come on back up to tall and then switching legs. So let's bring the right leg in front of the left now. This time with your right leg in front of your left, you'll notice your hips will float to the left. So really work hard to pull that right hip around to the front, even if you need to adjust your legs slightly to get there. Sending that left hip forward. Inhale, reaching the arms up if you can. It's a bit of a balance trick. Exhale down. Try not to clench your thighs or your seat too tight. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, hands to your waist. Send your thighs forward, lift your chest up and come into a wee bit of a back bend. So really focus on sending your thighs forward and lifting your heart up. Don't worry, we're only going to be here for one more second. Come back up to tall. Really nice job. Unwind the legs and let's come all the way up to standing. Good. Give a little shake to your ankles. That's it. Perfect. Give a little shake to your wrists. Standing tall like a mountain. And then once you've positioned yourself in this mountain pose, just take a little micro step back. In a practice that I've been practicing with lately, we take this little step back because a lot of us tend to worry a lot and think into the future and lunge ahead. And this little gesture can sort of set us more deeply into the present moment. You can have your arms reaching down or your hands to your waist. 
notice the weight of your big toe and the weight of your pinky toe on the mat. And as you inhale, you're gonna lift your heels, keeping both your pinky toe and your big toe down on the floor. So if you feel yourself starting to roll out towards the pinky toe side of the foot, just come back down. We're gonna rise up as high as you can that you could still stay rooted through that big toe and down. Rise up and down. Try to slowly rise up and slowly lower down. Just one more time, slowly rise up, slowly lower down. And then give those ankles a little shake. Back to your mountain pose. Inhale, you could reach the arms if you'd like. As you exhale, we're gonna come to a bit of a chair pose. Bend your ankles, bend your knees, bend your hips. Inhale, coming back up as you exhale, send your knees a little bit into a circle on your next chair pose. Inhale, standing. As you exhale, we're gonna circle the opposite direction. Inhale, exhale, circle. Exhale, circle. We're only gonna do this two more times, one on each side. Inhale is center, exhale, you're circling. Good. And then give those legs a little shake. Good, standing a little bit wider now. As you inhale, you can reach the arms back up if you'd like. As you exhale, let the arms hang like empty coat sleeves. Tuck your chin to your chest and you're gonna roll down one vertebra at a time. So imagine like you're having a race to be the slowest. Control the speed all the way down so that you can move between each individual vertebra all the way down to the ground. Once you're there, take your gaze towards your chin so you really stretch into the back of the neck. Maybe sway side to side. Maybe walk your hands a little further forward into down dog. Maybe stay exactly where you are. And pushing down through the feet, come back to this fold. We're gonna roll back up one vertebra at a time. So really control the speed by using your core and your legs, head and neck are the last things to lift. And if you feel it all lightheaded when you come standing up, just pause for a breath or two, maybe with your chin to your chest. Take your time. We're gonna do this one more time. So go ahead and roll down vertebra by vertebra, almost like you having, you're having a race to be the slowest. Trying to keep the same speed all the way down. Once you're down all the way, you could sway, you could be still. whatever your body's feeling like. And then when you're ready, pushing into the feet, rolling back up one vertebra at a time. Head is the last thing to lift. And now once you're standing, we're gonna start to circle the arm in the shoulder socket. So the, the um, Goal here is not to move your body at all, but just to move your arm in the shoulder socket. So sometimes I'll practice this like in a door frame so that I'm, I can only move my arm. So I want you to imagine that that's as sort of affixed as your body is. And you're gonna reach your one arm, doesn't matter which, forward, almost like the arm is reaching the shoulder blade away from the socket. Reaching your arm up, notice how my spine doesn't change shape and I'm gonna really reach that arm like I'm hanging from monkey bars. And then turn your palm and reach the arm behind you. Now this is the tricky part because you'll naturally wanna kind of twist your body. So really aim, I've got my other arm on my chest so I can really feel if I start to move, just to move the arm that's circling. 
And then when your arm is down, it's like you're carrying a heavy bag of groceries. Your shoulder's actually depressing. So let's do that again. Shoulder moves away from the spine. Up, 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 like you're hanging from something. Turn your palm, reach back and really try to get your pinky finger as close to the spine as you can without twisting your spine. Arm down, let it be heavy. Now change directions, we're gonna go backwards. Back. Up. forward and down and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so maybe take your hand just gently across your chest so you could feel if your shirt slides under your hands because the goal is just to move this arm in the shoulder socket and just for a moment between the two sides notice the difference between how your arms feel one versus the other so let's take this free arm and we're gonna reach it forward. Shoulder blade moves away from the spine. Reach up, 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 like you're hanging from monkey bars. Turn your palm now and reach back, trying to bring the pinky fingers close to your spine without twisting your body. And then down, let the shoulder depress. And again, forward, reaching the shoulder away from the spine. Up, reach, reach, reach towards the ceiling. Turn your palm and reach behind you. Pinky finger as close to the spine as you can. And then shoulder blade depresses down. Let's switch directions back. Up. Forward. And then heavy groceries. Good, and then circle the arms or shake the arms out a little bit. We're gonna stand for just one more pose. So notice the position of your low spine here. So notice what it feels like um, in the front of your body and in the back of your body. And you're gonna take a little micro step back with your back leg. Sorry, keep your weight over your front leg. Doesn't matter which leg you use, keep your weight on your front leg and extend that back leg. So hip extension is only, it's really, really small. It's only at the most like about 30 degrees or so. So notice that if you were to go much further, you're gonna change the shape of your low back. It's gonna get a little pinch here in the back right and a little longer in the front so we're just going to go as far as we can that the spine doesn't change shape you could stay onto the ball of that back foot because your weight is mostly on your front leg here stretching out the front of the hip keep the weight on the big toe of this back leg and then keeping yourself in the shape you're going to send your thighs forward so it's a really small shift and then back to neutral both thighs left and right shift forward so you'll just increase a stretch a little bit and one more time shift forward it's a really small movement and then standing back where you were just pause for a moment realign yourself in neutral notice the back and the front Extend your other leg. So you're only, it might be the same, it might be different. You'll be on the ball of your back foot. Straight the leg if you can, no big deal if you can't, but my weight is mostly on my front leg. Send your hips or rather send your thighs forward. So you get that little bit of an added stretch and then come back. Thighs forward, both left and right. And then back up. One more time, send both thighs forward. Back up. And then coming back to standing once again, even if you'd like go for a little walkabout. We're gonna make our way down onto the back next. Grabbing two blankets if you have them handy or two towels or even two pillows like off the couch or something is ideal. I'm just gonna grab a second blanket myself. Okay. 
and keep them within arm's reach. Let's come down to lie on our backs. Just gonna take a little sip here of my drink. So I always find it really comfortable when I come down onto my back to have my knees bent, my feet on the mat. So you might choose to do the same. I'm also gonna bring, use one of my blankets to be behind my head and my neck. So you go ahead and experiment with which, which, what is most comfortable for you. Maybe you wanna have something behind your head. Maybe it's more comfortable without. My other blanket's within arm's reach. Maybe your legs are straight. Most people I think are most comfortable with them bent. And once you're on your back, just take little movement side to side. Let yourself settle in here. If there's any other part of your back that feels like it's um, feeling a little tight, then you could bring another little pillow underneath that spot. So like if your low back was still feeling tight, sometimes it helps to bring a blanket under your bum or under your mid back. So just feeling out what's best for you. And then come to this neutral space in the center. As you lie here, try to bring your breath into the back of your body. So just as you breathe in and your breath can expand into the front and kind of fill it like a balloon, see if you can feel that same sensation on your back. So as you breathe in, you might feel the floor a little more clearly underneath you. Turn your palms to face up and slowly slide your arms open in the direction of a T shape, but you're only gonna go so far that your elbows and your um, arms can still feel the same as they did when they were down low. So start down low and notice, for me, my knuckles are on the ground, not my thumb. My um, elbows are on the ground. And then if I slowly start to slide my arms up, I'm only gonna go so far that those places are still touching. And while they're sliding up into a T, they're also sliding away from each other. So if your elbows lift up, you've gone too far. Once you're there, the arms and the shoulders are gonna stay affixed to the ground, but let's extend your right leg and bend your left knee if you're not already there. Take an inhalation and as you exhale, you're gonna twist your body over to the right. So lift your left leg up, twisting to the right. Come back to center and now bend both knees. Take an inhale as you exhale, twisting both knees like a windshield wiper to the right and choosing whichever of those options feel best for you. Remember that the goal is to keep your heart facing towards the ceiling. So while you're twisting your left bump, we're still going to twist to the right, twist to the right, come back to center on an inhale, twist on your exhale. So your left seat might lift, maybe your ribs a little bit, but your heart is staying pointed to the ceiling because your arms aren't moving. So you're only twisting so far that you can maintain that position. Then let's do the same thing on the other side. Take a breath, notice the difference between left and right. And then as you exhale, twisting, maybe your left leg is extended and your right leg is bent. Maybe both legs are bent. Inhale to center. Exhale to twist. Inhale to center. Exhale to twist. Maybe one or two more times, then we'll come back to center. Take an inhalation and as you exhale, take your left knee towards your chest. You can hold the top of the knee, the back of the thigh, the front of the shin, whatever's comfortable for you. 
pulling the leg ever so slightly towards your chest to open up the low back just a little bit. And if you'd like, you can extend the opposite leg long. Now, as you're holding this position, they take the left leg and start to pull it like it's gonna straighten and resist that pull with your arms. Holding that sensation for about three or five breaths. Make sure you can still breathe and that this effort is only about a six or seven out of 10. And then gently step down. Move if you feel like moving. When you're ready, take an inhalation. And as you exhale, we're gonna bring the other knee towards the chest. Clasp on if you'd like. You can interlace the fingers to the front, the back, the shin, the thigh. Extend your other leg if you'd like. And then you're gonna resist a little bit. So pull your right leg as though you're gonna try and straighten it but resist that with your arms. So the leg engages, engaging your muscles at about a six or seven out of 10. So you can still be breathing fully for about three or five more breaths. And then letting that leg go, moving however you're craving, butterfly legs, sway side to side, big stretches. Last thing we're gonna do before we come to our meditative pose is rolling over to one side now. And as you roll to one side, I want you to imagine that you're against a wall. So try to position or in your imagination, try to see yourself lined up the back of the head with the sh back of the shoulders, with your tailbone, with your heels. So you're gonna imagine yourself on a wall. And then you're going to glue your torso to that wall so that just like when we were moving solo the arm, now we're gonna move solo just this top leg. So visualize the leg in the hip socket. It's like a ball and socket joint. Taking that top leg in towards your chest without moving your hips. So without like caving forward, you're gonna bring the knee forward and then take the knee up towards the ceiling, but don't tip yourself back. Yep. And then roll that leg so that the knee points down, the foot points up. So imagine that you're with your knee, you're drawing big circles. And as you do that, be careful, you're not rolling your hips. So your bottom leg ought to stay just as it feels with both legs resting. So you're only going so far that you can make this movement with just your top leg and then changing directions of your movements here. So you're gonna circle the other way. Make sure you're still breathing. You're not holding the breath here. These are great movements to do if you find yourself sedentary throughout the week, just to move those joints. Motion is lotion. These are how the joint, uh, the joint capsules replenish themselves and stay healthy. So then we'll rest here for one or two breaths, feeling whatever you're feeling. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna roll over to the other side. As you do, try to set yourself up on this imaginary wall, back of the head, hips, tailbone rather, back of the, back of the shoulders, back of the head, tailbone and heels. So shoulders are stacked on top of shoulders, hips on top of hips taking the knee forward without moving your hip away from that imaginary wall. Up, circle around and down. Draw those big circles with your knee. Big circles with your knee. Don't worry too, too much about the movement itself. Just try to get into those far reaching corners, maybe change directions. Make sure you're not holding the breath or clenching 
any movement or any sensation is about a six or a seven out of 10 so that your attention can also be on the rest of your body. Maybe one more time. And then we're gonna be nice and still for a breath or two. Transitioning now to any pose where you feel rested or comfortable, like you could sleep there. So that means that if your body still feels like it needs any sort of particular movement, or um, if you're feeling chilly, if you want to cover up with a blanket or socks, now's the time for you to make yourself feel as physically comfortable as possible. So move if you feel like moving, be still if you feel like being still. And then take a good couple of moments here to find comfort in your body. So maybe that's lying on the floor or seated, but maybe that's um, sitting in your favorite chair or uh, your favorite spot on the couch. The intention here is to be physically comfortable so that your body doesn't distract you and we can be mentally present. So you're not gonna be asleep, but your body's gonna be resting. So if you're seated and you're not used to being seated on the floor, for example, maybe you wanna come up against a wall. No matter where you are, turn your palms to face upwards. And on both hands, touch your thumb to your index finger, your pointer finger. Notice your next breath and imagine like that breath is coming in through the circle that you've made in your fingers here and out through the circles. And then in the little pause between your exhalation and your next inhalation, slide your thumb to the middle finger as you inhale and as you exhale. And in that pause, you're gonna take your thumb to the ring finger in and out. And then to the pinky finger. And then back again to the ring finger, to the middle, to the index. And you're gonna go back and forth, moving between each exhale and the next inhale. If you lose track, just wait for your next exhale and start over wherever you are.
If you find your mind wandering as you practice, when you bring your finger to touch your thumb, just make really small circles there. And keep this practice letting yourself know that it's a practice of coming back. It's not a practice of not being distracted, but it's a practice of coming back, a recommitment. Notice that you're breathing and slowly let your hands relax. Take a few breaths to be with yourselves on all levels. Notice the level of energy you have. Notice the breath. Notice how you're feeling in your physical form. And notice what your heart is speaking to you. You're welcome to join me for a moment in giving gratitude to the people on whose land we're practicing and living. And gratitude to the founders of our yoga practice and the history and the lineage that we learn from. And lastly, giving gratitude to one another for holding space in this way, for showing up, giving gratitude to yourself. <laughs> 